We are the lab doctors. I'm Amanda. I'm Dorothy. And I'm Zhao Yong. We are biomedical researchers who realize we still have a lot to learn about science. So why not join us on this quest? Hey everyone, welcome back to the Lab Doctors podcast. So this week we're going to be talking about... Coffee. Wow, the excitement. <laughs> Coffee. Someone hasn't had his morning coffee. <laughs> um, so I guess my first question for y'all is how do y'all feel about coffee's effect on cardiovascular health? So like cardio meaning heart, vascular meaning your blood vessels. Yeah, mine is a very prominent effect when I drink like mm-hmm. pure coffee. Chinese. <laughs> co- Chinese. Legit coffee. <laughs> coffee o kosong. Coffee o, yes. Or coffee. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Those kind of like my heart would be very fast. Yep. So I don't drink coffee, mm-hmm. but I feel like it would have a great effect on me because other caffeinated drinks, like energy drinks, is like a hit, you know? <laughs> and that's why I don't drink it usually. I, I just uh-huh. sleep. <laughs> okay, what about cardiovascular health in general? Um... Theoretically, Mm -hmm. I guess it's not really good to pump your (laughs) system with caffeine just because like it will cause your heart to beat um, stronger. Mm. Yes. So um, that's not very good long term. Mm. I don't know. Maybe if your body is fine with it, Mm -hmm. I feel like it should be. I mean, not too much also. Like maybe three cups a day would be maximum. Mm. But if your body reacts like mine, then maybe not. Mm. Yeah. So like what you're alluded to, coffee is the most common cognitive enhancer used by humans for mental alertness and concentration. I feel like I don't drink coffee for concentration. In fact, I feel like when I drink coffee, my senses are dialed up to like 12. So then I get even more easily distracted. But anyway, that's it. Apparently, healthcare practitioners have historically cautioned against the consumption of coffee for patients with cardiovascular diseases. Mm. However, a more recent observational study, so in 2018, 2019, and 2021, this misconception has been challenged where not only the safety, but also the beneficence of coffee intake on the incidence of arrhythmia, or rather arrhythmia. So Irregular rhythm of, of your heart. Yes, and cardiovascular disease prevention has been reported. So Wait, so there are benefits? Yeah, actually helps with these conditions. Ooh, I see. <laughs> it's like it reads so fast that the irregularity is not so prominent anymore. <laughs> it's like the room for error. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I guess like one of the goals in arrhythmia is usually if you're not going to control the rhythm is to control the rate and it's usually to mm. slow down the rate. So yes. I'm curious to see what the benefits of coffee is. So, a new study by Ching et al. involves a very large prospective study. So, they had like around 450k participants. So, prospective meaning they enroll people at one point in time and then they follow up with these people until the endpoint is observed. Mm. So, in this case, the endpoints included major cardiovascular endpoints such as um, cardiovascular diseases and or arrhythmia and mortality endpoints such as cardiovascular related mortality, sudden cardiac death and also all-cause mortality. So basically, a mortality resulting from anything. So to more specifically look at the effects of caffeine, they also categorized coffee consumption into different subtypes, including decaffeinated coffee, instant coffee, and grounded coffee. So that's what's different about this study and why people still need to keep doing more of these studies. Decaffeinated coffee is coffee? Without caffeine. Actually... (laughs) A then, dumb question. Is caffeine the thing that is causing the I guess that's what heart people think, right? And like the It's yeah. the most studied one. Okay. Wait, so decaffeinated coffee, do they use coffee beans? Yes, but they extract the caffeine oh, out. Oh, okay. Of the, so all the other things that come from your traditional coffee will be is Yes. That- Interesting. So the issues with this study, as in the limitations, is that basically participants self-report uh, everything. Uh, so why like can't they just much? plug them to an ECG or something? No, no, no. It's in like coffee consumption. So oh. they self-report. <laughs> I was like, wait, what? <laughs> Okay. So they also assume that coffee consumption remains unchanged throughout the participants' follow-up. They should collect the receipts of the order, like <laughs> coffee or kosong, and make sure you order coffee. What if you make it at home? Yeah, oh. that's why. Right. <laughs> <The> video. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> they assume that you 
stick to the same subtype. So if I say huh? I drink decaffeinated coffee, I'm forever drinking decaffeinated. For how long? How long do they monitor it? Very long. So I it's can't hard. change my... Yeah. Nope, I'm part of this study. I have to drink this type of coffee forever now. Yeah. I guess, okay, like one out of every two weeks is fine if you like change it up as long as most of the time you are... Yeah, hopefully that yeah. like it doesn't really affect the error all that much. Yeah. So that's it. It is the UK Biobank and the population is predominantly Caucasian. So Got it. it's not entirely sure whether or not these findings can be transposed to other populations. Okay. So before we go into the results, do you all have any guesses on how it affects cardiovascular disease and arrhythmia occurrence and also mortality? Against. I think coffee is bad. As in for incidence of the cardiovascular outcomes or like mortality? On cardiovascular, I don't think it will affect mortality. Okay. I'm a bit skeptical. Like I said, caffeine supposedly, like one of the things is like it will make your heartbeat faster and heartbeat stronger. Mm -hmm. So I can't really see how it would be a benefit in arrhythmias. Mm -hmm. And then like if we have more arrhythmias, then it's like more chance of death. So I can't visualize it. So So yeah, like coffee, like it I'm should- skeptical about the benefits of coffee right. in cardiovascular health and in cardiovascular mortality. What about decaffeinated coffee? I guess I wouldn't expect a difference between decaffeinated coffee and no consumption. Okay. Yeah, I feel like there would be a difference between decaffeinated and coffee itself. Mm -hmm. Given that when I don't drink the coffee alone, like if I drink mocha or cappuccino, mm -hmm. I'm fine. Yeah, so I think if you take out what is known to be the active ingredient, then... Okay, so they have four conclusions. The first one is ground, instant and decaffeinated coffee were associated with equivalent reductions in the incidence of cardiovascular disease and cardiovascular and all-cause mortality. So basically, drinking any form of coffee would lower the incidence of cardiovascular disease and also mortality from oh. any cause. So coffee is good. <laughs> Apparently. Why? Mm. Physiologically, I need to know why. Okay. Do they say how many cups they drink like yes. per day or per week? Yes, they do. So then the next one is two to three cups a day of all types of coffee was consistently associated with the largest risk reduction in cardiovascular disease, chronic heart disease and chronic heart failure and all cause mortality. Wow. I noticed you haven't talked about arrhythmias. Mm. So ground and instant coffee, but not decaffeinated that coffee were associated with a reduction in arrhythmias and atrial fibrillation. Wow. No way. Yeah, so in fact, caffeine apparently helps with making your heartbeat regularly for some okay, reason. Okay, later. <laughs> Starbucks. <laughs> And lastly, a U-shaped relationship, meaning... Why is it U-shaped? Opposite of bell curve. Yeah, opposite of bell curve. <laughs> but it's a U-shaped relationship exists between caffeinated coffee intake and incidence of any arrhythmia. And the largest risk reduction was present at four to five cups a day. <gasps> Who would drink more than four I to five know. cups? I, I thought four and five, four cups is a lot already. I don't know. So what this U-shape means is like at lower consumptions or at very high consumptions, yeah. the incidence of arrhythmia is high but then in the middle is where the incidence is the lowest which is like four to five yeah that's crazy four to five big cups or small that's it doesn't matter about the how the size of the cup though because if you're drinking like two espresso shots it's not really a large volume but you're oh, drinking yeah. like freaking concentrated oh. coffee like whereas if you drink like watered down like coffee yeah. then you're still consuming the same amount you're, but it's yeah. just so it's just an arbitrary cup yeah so I have thoughts I'll <laughs> reserve it for later <laughs> Coffee is a complex compound composing of more than 100 biologically active components. So honestly, we keep talking about caffeine because it is the most well-studied compound, but mm. it's not the only thing. Ooh, also, are there antioxidants? Yeah. Yay! So the thing about coffee is that it, is, it has a lot of antioxidants. She and so Starbucks membership now. <laughs> nah, we're too... We can't afford that. Yeah, Starbucks yeah. every day. That's true. But, I mean, then okay. the, but then the coffee shop one gives me like... You, the heart will beat very fast, so I can't drink that it's one. The Starbucks one is not really like coffee, coffee, you know, you're no, drinking drink, like Because I can choose mocha from there and like, I can't go to the coffee shop. Can I go to the coffee shop and be like, where are mocha? How do I order? Oh, I wonder if coffee and Milo would taste like mocha. 
<laughs> oh wait, no, I need four to five cups a day, right? Okay, I can make four to five. Atrial fibrillation, but two to three cups only if you are interested in reducing the risk of cardiovascular disease. Oh. And or its related mortalities and all cause mortality. Oh, in okay, general. I guess two to three cups. So apparently, coffee consumption at three to four cups a day is already listed in the guidelines for the 2021 European Society of Cardiology. Oh. Yeah, for the prevention of cardiovascular disease. That's it. That's only in Europe. But yeah, apparently, I forgot I'm, this, not for Asia. <laughs> <laughs> What if it's opposite? It's a yeah, and even bell shaped curve. <laughs> <laughs> even in the Americas, it's also not really within any like cardiovascular disease guidelines. Um, it is also important to note that high coffee intake can result in anxiety, restlessness, insomnia, psychomotor agitation, and other toxic effects. So I don't know. I don't know if we should really be drinking. Also, as in the benefits for cardiovascular health is there, mm. but there's all these other side yeah, effects that exactly. is not good. Which I feel all of which can affect cardiovascular health as well. So yeah. I don't really know. I have thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> yes, do you want to say them now? After this is just my own thoughts. Okay, let's hear your thoughts first. Okay, so in my honest, honest, honest opinion, the thing about coffee is also that caffeine itself has a near 100% bioavailability. So what bioavailability is, is how much of the compound that you consume is available for your body to use. So kind of like how much your body absorbs of this substance. And 100% means however much caffeine you intake is however much your body is going to like absorb and use. Exactly. And its main way of getting out of your body is through metabolism or its breakdown. And that is determined by this enzyme known as cytochrome CYP1A2 or CYP1A2. Basically the enzyme that degrades almost everything. everything. (laughs) (laughs) And in general, one's metabolism of caffeine can vary by as much as 24% from the population average. And this may explain the variation in the effects and tolerance of coffee between individuals. Long story short, three to four cups might in fact be excessive for certain individuals. So always check in with how you feel after drinking coffee rather than just like, oh, the guideline is three to four, I'm just going to drink three to four because that's what works. Not necessarily the case for everyone. So that's why in my opinion, it's like everything is still in moderation. (laughs) And I honestly think this effect of coffee on cardiovascular health is quite solid. It's just that for me, three to four is just like way too much. Yeah. Per day. I think like my max is like two. So that's what I have to say, but I don't know what y'all want to say. So I think in theory, if you drink a lot, it should, for example, make arrhythmias worse if you intake too much coffee and you don't control it. Right. But I realize like most like you and like mm-hmm. most people are probably self-regulating because you can feel when your heart starts to race. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can feel like when you get a little dizzy. Mm. And I think that self-regulation is what is helping. So Um. I'm thinking about it as coffee will make things worse, but people will still keep drinking coffee because this is an experiment. Experiment is you drink coffee or you drink decaffeinated coffee or you don't drink coffee, you know? But in real life, it's not so simple. So if people are already self-regulating and like since the effects of coffee is kind of obvious, Mm -hmm. then you can self-regulate and then like you won't over drink. Right, 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 right. Yeah, exactly. So that's my theory on like this study so coffee could be bad but like if people are like somehow if you average out and everyone is self-regulating like Mm. their intake of coffee then you wouldn't really see any effect i'm just surprised that there is like a reduction so maybe for me it's the all cause yeah it's the all cause mortality that disturbs me but they also speculate that it's largely due to not only the other antioxidants that are present in coffee but also caffeine's own antioxidative effects yeah so are you gonna be a coffee drinker from now <laughs> maybe not but i guess then i won't be so concerned if someone like i know drinks too much coffee I would still be concerned though if it's like... No, if it's work. like their regular practice, oh. every day they drink mm. three to four cups of coffee, then maybe I'll be a bit more like, okay, hopefully... Your tolerance is the like, okay yeah. or... Yeah, yeah. and then it'll, it'll be good for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then again, this is not in Asian population, so yeah. it's a bit... Hard to say. Yeah. For me, I'm also a bit like, then just eat more blueberries. Like, if antioxidative effects is so good, just eat more berries. And eat fruits. Yeah. I'll just eat the, <laughs> eat the tablets that are the antioxidant. Antioxidant right? tablets, yeah, <laughs> maybe. And as usual, subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Spotify, a like and a comment, and maybe a rating would help us a lot. You can also follow us on our social media, Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook, and feel free to DM us any questions. Alternatively, you can email us at thelabdoctors at gmail.com. We'll post the links in the episode description, so check that out if you're interested. 
Thank you. Bye. Bye.